Hello friends, and welcome to this podcast. I'm going to talk about music. Um, I love uh, I love the pop music, love the rock music, love the avant-garde stuff. I love I love it if it's good. That's what I always say. People say, "What kind of music do you like?" And like, I like it if it's good. Um, that's a very uh, confusing and ambiguous answer, and I'm sorry, but I can't think of another. I can't think of any other criteria. If I like it, it's good. If it's good, I like it. Does that work? Um, when I was younger, I really got into listening to bands that were not on the radio. I think I felt like I had discovered something when I, when I discovered bands in the um, cardboard boxes in the back of the co-op record store in the college town I grew up. You know, there wasn't a... The record stores in the town all just had the mainstream stuff. You know, you go through and find um, every, you know, every record by every mainstream person. But then I, I kind of got to where I wanted to go beyond those record store bins, like what you would find in the in the uh, department stores back in those days. A lot of shops, stores, I guess, that are the, the old days equivalent of something like Target or Walmart or something always had a record section. Um, now I think they may, some of them may still have a CD section. I don't know. I haven't been in a shop like that in so long. They may have a section where they sell CDs. I don't know. Maybe that ended a thousand years ago and I'm just, I'm showing how, how long it's been since I've been in a Target, but they used to have that. And it was only, it was usually mainstream stuff that you would find in there. You would find the stuff that was popular, that was selling the most. But I got into, I lived in a, grew up in a college town when I was a kid and there were some funky places, bookstores and things that would have a back section underneath a table somewhere with cardboard boxes that had, you know, things like punk rock and new wave and international imports. And I would just, I was so fascinated with music that I had not heard on the radio and things that were popular maybe in other countries. And sometimes I would buy things just because the cover was cool. And by doing that, I discovered some really great bands. Um, the very first uh, XTC album that I bought, I bought it because the cover was so cool. It was just a whole bunch of text. And it was basically s describing an album cover. It was uh, the front cover said, this is an album cover. It was, <laughs> it was that kind of mentality. And I thought that was so clever and cool that I thought, you know, the album cover is so cool and clever. I'll bet the music is too. And it was. And I became a lifelong fan of XTC. But... I was into the, that was considered obscure. I was into the obscure stuff, but I was also into some songs on the radio that became like radio hits. And not that I was ashamed. I made a promise to myself that I was never going to be ashamed of music that I liked. I was never going to be, you know, suffer from peer pressure of my friends saying, it's not cool to like Genesis. It's like, well, I like Genesis. Um, you know, and my punk rock friends saying, why are you listening to Yes or Gentle Giant? That's awful. And I'm like, I like it. I really like it. And so sometimes I'd hear things on the radio that were maybe not considered cool by the punk rock people or whatever, but I liked it for some reason. And one of those bands that I liked in the early days and just latched onto them for some reason, Heart. Yes, that's right. Heart. The Wilson Sisters. Um, they this album cover has a has a, a nice valentine on it and the name is heart and this two like heartbreakingly beautiful girls on the front here and it was it was kind of like not the kind of record that you would get if you were into punk rock at the time or into the sort of grungy heavy rock that i was into this one oddly enough didn't look right sitting next to the led zeppelin albums or the black sabbath albums that i was also into but the music on here is so heavy and so cool and it's so poppy and and yet the guitar stuff on here is so rocking. Um, it's got Crazy On You on here. You know that song. And um, Dreamboat Annie. Um, all the songs on here are great, but Magic Man, Crazy On You are such great songs. I know you've heard them a zillion times on the radio. But check them out again and listen to them with, with like fresh ears. Try to 
put yourself in the context of having never heard those songs before and listen to them with a good set of headphones. Um, the acoustic guitar strumming on there, um, amazing guitar player, un, un, unsung hero, guitar rock goddess. Um, and you cannot, you cannot deny the voice of this woman here. Um, what an amazing rock and roll voice like breathtaking voice, just heavy, heavy voice. Um, one of my favorite singers of all time and, uh, and an incredible guitar player and amazing songwriters. And the rest of their band is incredible too, but the dynamics and the drama of their music is what I really like. The, the songs about those times about the 70s about these the era that this record came out um i believe this one came out in 1976 and so there the 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 struggles of being a young person and a person who would hear these songs it's the kind of rock music that i think probably helped a lot of people who were suffering or going through bad times they would listen to bands like Heart and Heart would fill them up with hope and you know ambition and maybe feel like I can do it you know and I can make it past this that's what it's one of the purposes of rock and roll I think when you're young you listen to it to refuel yourself to kind of reboot yourself and to realize that there's other people out there that are that are going through these heightened emotions that you're having as a young person and you don't know what to do about it. And everything you want to do about it is either illegal or it's frowned upon or somebody is going to make fun of you for it or or whatever. But I think one of the things that young people, my friends and I all did this. We were not ever ashamed of what music we liked. <laughs> it, you know, we liked it. If it was good, we liked it. And that's one thing about Heart. You know, they, they were considered kind of uncool by the by some of the circles that I hung in at the time when I was playing in bands. There were a lot of punk rock people that were were kind of anti-establishment as far as the pop popular music, radio, massive radio hits, huge arena shows and things like that. But um, there's no denying that there is depth to to a lot of that music. Um, Heart had a lot of depth to their early albums. I'm not a huge fan of their later stuff. I think they started getting a little bit formulaic in some ways, but you cannot deny the power of that song, Barracuda. You know the one I'm talking about? Like, what a guitar riff that has. The songs on Dreamboat Annie have this really nice acoustic guitar sound that is augmented with the electric guitars. Of course, the drumming and the bass playing is impeccable and all that. But but you know you you have to bow to the superiority of Ann Wilson's incredible voice on these albums. Not just the timbre and the tone or the note hitting of her voice, but the emotion in her voice. There's a there is a um, there's a style of I mean. A style of singing where where you are very emotional with the voice. And then there's rock and roll singing where it's almost like you're trying to sing loud. Like you're trying to just belt it out. And the only emotion is relentless energy or anger or aggression. But uh, Ann Wilson's voice is so powerful because she used dynamics. Um, she wasn't just aggressive and rock and roll and screaming aggressive um, power ballads or power rock. She knew how to put dynamics into her rendition of these songs. She put the emotion into every word, every phrasing, all the phrasings. Listen to these records again. I know you're familiar with some of these songs, but listen to them again in that context. Listen to them in the context of how she is singing these songs. A lot of these songs are so familiar to us, it's hard to imagine somebody creating them or coming up with a way 
making choices as far as how the songs are going to be delivered, especially vocally, because you're so familiar with that, that vocal treatment of that song. But imagine thinking it up. Imagine coming up with that way of, of addressing the emotion in, in these songs. And you realize kind of the power of certain singers and certain musicians who think of that stuff. They create it. They invent it. Um, her singing is so powerful and so dynamic. I, I absolutely recommend all those early um, those those early uh, heart albums. I mean, I don't want to put down their later stuff. It just wasn't. It didn't speak to me anymore. After a certain point, those early albums still speak to me. They're still. I put them on and I still get that. I still get it. They're very tough. Uh, the guitar playing again is incredible, and uh, the songwriting is so powerful. Lyrics are very powerful, very heartfelt, and um, all that stuff. Anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go <laughs> on Dreamboat Annie. as a great album. It has a it has a song, Dreamboat Annie, which is reprised later. So it's another one of those album rock songs that you should listen to from start to finish. Um, it tells stories, and it, go, it takes you on a journey from here to there. And when you're done, you feel like you've watched a great movie. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to say thanks for listening and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Mm -hmm.